Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we will discuss the ninja rope, how to use it, how it works, different ways of moving with the rope and we'll top it off with some tips. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Select the ninja rope and aim just like with any other weapon. Move your aim up, down and anything in between. Once you've aimed, press space to shoot the rope. Unlike most other weapons, you can shoot the rope while jumping or falling. You can also shoot it in the opposite direction. However, don't wait too long while falling, as once you reach fall damage speed, you won't be able to shoot the ninja rope, and your turn will end prematurely. Always equip the parachute as your secondary tool. If you miss your aim, you can manually activate the parachute by pressing the jump button. If you hit a wall and end your roping, the parachute will activate automatically, preventing damage to your bottom and ending your turn. When shooting the rope, always try to aim for high ledges or the ceiling of the terrain, but more on this later. If I shoot the rope at the ceiling and then press space to release it and quickly press space again to reattach it, it will be shot straight up. But if I move my worm on the rope a bit to the left and then release and shoot the rope again, it will be shot to the left at the same angle. In essence, the angle the rope shoots at is the mirror image of the angle you are hanging from. Always try to remember the angle at which you release the rope. This is very important for some advanced movements, but more on this later. Another important thing to remember is this. If you shoot the rope at an angle greater than 45 degrees, the next shot will be reduced to an angle of 45 degrees. For example, if you aim and shoot the rope all the way down to the left and try to reattach, the next shot will be reduced to a 45 degrees angle. Climbing up is the most basic movement with a ninja rope and it is not hard. When shooting the rope, always try to aim at high ledges or you might have problems pulling off this movement. The closer you shoot to the edge of the terrain, the easier the climb. If you shorten your rope by half, you will double your speed, and the shorter the rope gets, the faster your worm will accelerate, reaching insane speeds as you get closer to zero length. For this reason, you want to the sweet spot where you can gain speed, but still manage handling. To perform this basic movement, adjust the length of the rope to around half, and use the left and up arrow keys to bounce your worm off the wall and reach the higher part of the terrain. Once your worm is almost vertical, you can increase the length of the rope for easier or more precise landing. Just like with any other movement with a rope, this one requires practice, but it should not take long before you master it. This is another basic movement with the ninja rope, and it is not hard as well. It is usually used to cover small or large distances to reach enemy worms. To pull it off, first, shoot the rope at the ceiling or a ledge of the terrain. You can do this by shooting straight up or at an angle. I recommend doing it at an angle, if possible, because you will gain momentum for movement much faster. Once you are in the air, start swinging in the desired direction. Timing is important, and you want to release and reattach the rope always at the same angle, which is around 45 degrees. This doesn't have to be perfect, but don't wait to get too close to the 90 degrees, as you will lose speed. Use left and right arrow keys to swing your worm and gain the desired momentum. Use space to shoot and reattach the rope, and use up and down arrow keys to adjust the length if you are going too fast or too slow. Always equip the parachute as the secondary weapon, just in case things go south, or to reach enemy worms more easily after the last swing. This is a bit harder to master, but not always hard to pull off. It is very circumstantial, and you will have to apply all your knowledge of rope mechanics to move freely. If you miscalculate your next shot with the rope, you are going down, and at this point the parachute as a secondary tool is, in most cases, your only hope not to lose the turn. This movement is useful when there isn't always a ceiling or a high ledge in your path to the enemy warps. You will start your movement the same way as the climbing movement, and continue like it was the scrolls movement, but the angles at which you release and reattach the rope are not always the same. Here you will have to make the judgment when to do it. Try different rope lengths to slow down your worm for more precise reattaching, and use the rope length to bounce off a part of the terrain to make reattaching easier and more precise. The most important thing is to know where the next rope will be shot, and the rest is, as with any rope movement, 
Han äter och bräcktes. Rope knocking is not hard to pull off if you know what you're doing and where we're doing it. This tricky movement is usually followed after another movement, but this is not always the case. The goal is to move an enemy worm away from the wall in order to throw it into the water with, in most cases, a cheap weapon and gain a nice advantage for the rest of the match. All we have to do is shoot the rope somewhere above the enemy worm. The longer the rope, the easier it is to do rope knocking, because you will have more time to pull it off. To make things even easier, you should try to shoot the rope up as straight as possible. You won't always have ideal circumstances, but with practice, you will be able to do it in harder conditions. Once you have shot the rope, move your worm just a bit off the ground, but still in line with the enemy worm. At this point, start swinging left and right to gain momentum. Once your worm starts moving towards the target, release the rope and let the momentum do its magic. The fall of your worm will move the enemy worm as well, and in most cases, this is all you need to get behind him and throw him into the water with some basic weapon. Now, here are some important things to note. First, before you shoot the rope, always calculate the swing in your mind and place your worm close enough to avoid going above the enemy worm while swinging. Second, don't try rope knocking if the ground isn't flat or leaning downwards at least a bit. Otherwise, neither your worm nor the enemy worm will be able to slide away from the ball. Rope knocking can be performed on high and small edges as well. In this scenario, both worms will go down and suffer a small fall damage. Avoid harming your worm by equipping it with a parachute after shooting the rope, and continue your turn by throwing enemy worm into the water. Kicks are one of the hardest movements to pull off properly, but with a bit of practice and knowledge, anyone can master them. They are used to cover vast distances in seconds, and on large maps, this movement can make a difference. To start a kick with the ninja rope, you will have to shoot it at the ceiling, such as a part of the terrain or a girder, or the upper part of the wall of the terrain. You will have to shorten the rope depending on how much distance you want to cover. As we have already said, the shorter the rope, the bigger the acceleration of the wall. You will use the up and left arrow keys to shorten the rope and bounce off the wall to gain momentum for a kick. Timing of the release is very important and the direction of the throw will highly depend on it. Just like any other technique with the rope, this also requires practice. Keep in mind that you don't have to release the rope if you are not satisfied with the quality of the bounce. Just use the down arrow key to lighten the rope and try again. Just like with many other uses of the rope, here you should equip the parachute as a secondary tool as well, in case you are not able to reattach the rope after the throw of a war, or in some cases, if you hit the wall before reattaching the rope. Timing is important and unforgiving. Once you throw your worm into the air and it gets close to the other part of the terrain, shoot the rope to reattach when the worm gets close enough, but not too close to hit the terrain first. If you don't need other rope swings for the rest of the turn, the safest thing is to activate the parachute right before the landing to avoid aiming and reattaching the rope. Launching your worm into the air over the ledges is one of the hardest movements to master for simple reasons. It requires perfect timing and it all happens so fast. This is similar to climbing as you will shoot the rope at the ledge of the terrain and use the up and left arrow keys to shorten the rope and bounce off against the wall for momentum. But you will need to do it with a very short rope and miss it at the exactly necessary moment to pull it off. This requires a lot of practice and even experienced players sometimes struggle with this movement. Equipping the parachute as the secondary tool is a must in this case, and you will need it almost every time to land on the other part of the terrain. If the wind is blowing in the same direction as your worm wants to go, you can always activate the parachute early on while in the air, if your timing of releasing the rope was not perfect. We have mentioned the parachute, but it is not the only tool that can be used while roping. You can combine it with weapons as well, for example, you can throw a mine or a dynamite onto enemy worms while hanging or strolling with the rope. Here is a quick look at all the tools and weapons that can be used or fired while using the ninja rope. Worms WMD is a great game, but some bugs take a bit of magic away. One of them can happen while you are gliding with the parachute or move around with the rope. If you activate the mine while moving with the rope or gliding with the parachute and the explosion damages another worm, you won't be able to control the rope or parachute for a few seconds, until the damage is calculated for the damaged worm. Let's hope future updates will fix it, among other things.
Mastering the ninja rope is one of the best ways to improve your skills and chances of winning since it is a such a useful tool that can make a difference in certain moments of the match. However, it is not the only thing necessary for a win. Keep in mind that most schemes, especially competitive ones, have a limited number of rope swings, usually between 3 to 5, and I have made this video with that reality in mind. Roping can be an art, and there are certain schemes where the sole goal is to move as fast as possible from point A to point B. This is usually done on custom maps specifically designed for this purpose. In those cases, rope swings are unlimited, and skilled players can do much more compared to what you usually see in regular matches. Most of the movements I mentioned have subcategories. For example, kicks have several of them, and I will link a video in the description where you can explore them further. I will also add links to rope racing tutorials for people who want to master roping for the sake of the art and go down that road. It should be enough for a start. If you were hoping to learn movements relevant for competitive matches, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Watch showcases of ninja rope strikes and moves on the links in the description to see more examples. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Wiper, out.